In this video, we're going to start looking at section 6-4 on vectors and dot products. Uh, here's our bullet points. Find the dot product of two vectors. Find the angle between any two vectors. Uh, we'll do those in this video, and the rest of this stuff we'll pick up in 6-4 uh, day 2. So let's get started. Uh, so far, we've studied uh, two vector operations, vector addition and vector multiplication by a scalar, each of which yields another vector. In this section, we're going to study a third operation called the dot product. And when we're done here, our final answer will be a scalar, not a vector. So here's our definition of a dot product, the dot product of vector u, which would be u sub 1, u sub 2, and vector v, v sub 1, v sub 2. We would write it like this, u dot v, and we just multiply the first sub 1s together, so we would multiply the first uh, number here in the vector u with the first number here in vector v, and then we would add to that multiply the second number in vector u times the second number in vector v and again we just add those together and that's a dot product and below we have the properties of dot products you know a lot of these just flow right from arithmetic u dot v is exactly the same as v dot u because we are multiplying on each side of a, an addition sign so it doesn't matter what order we dot our two vectors uh, the zero vector dotted with any vector is going to be zero. Uh, now here, notice this is u dot v plus w. So what we could kind of do here is uh, distribute the u dot. We could distribute u dot to the v and then plus u dot to the w. Number four down below. If we dot a vector with itself, we just get its magnitude squared. Now down here on this last one, this is, might be a little confusing. We can't just distribute this scalar C across U dot V. You know, we would distribute it either to one or the other. We could distribute it to the U and have scalar U, C times vector U, and then we would dot that with V. Or we could attach that scalar C to vector V and then dot that with U. Either way, we should get the same answer. Uh, and here we go. Example one, just some nice easy find some dot products. So here we've got two vectors dotted. So first we're going to multiply four times two. And then we're going to add to that five times three. Five times three. So four times two is eight. Five times three is 15. If you add them up, you get the dot product 23. Uh, next, letter B, 2 times 1 plus negative 1 times 2. So 2 times 1 is 2, negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2, 2 plus a negative 2 is 0. And then our last one here, 0 times 4, that's equal to 0, plus 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6, and those add up to negative 6. Uh, example two, we're going to use some of the properties of dot products. So let's see here in the front, we've got our vectors up top. U is here, and then we've got V, and we've got W. So let's see what they want here for the first one. If we're going to do U dot V, and then we're going to multiply that by W. So let's just say, you know, our, our final answer here is going to be a vector because U dot V, this will be a scalar, and then we'll multiply that scalar across a vector. So our final answer should be in the form of a vector. So let's do the U dot V first. I'll use the blue ink for that. So we're going to multiply negative 1 times 2. That's negative 2 plus 3 times negative 4. That'll be negative 12. And then we're going to condense that down in the next step, and then we're going to multiply that across vector w. So I'm just going to copy vector w here in red ink, 1 comma negative 2. So back to our dot product here. Well, if we uh, add these two together, we get negative 14. And then we will multiply that scalar across the vector 1, negative 2. And I think we did this in the last section, 6-3. We kind of just distribute the negative 14. 
So we have negative 14 comma positive 28 as our final answer for that vector. All right. Uh, letter B, we're going to dot vector u with 2 times vector v. So our final answer here will not be a vector. It'll just be a scalar, just a number. So we're going to dot u, and I'm just going to copy that here, negative 1, 3. We're going to dot that with 2 times v. Well, here's v, so I'm just going to multiply this by 2 right now. So that will be 4 comma negative 8. And now we're going to dot product these two. So negative 1 times 4, negative 4. We will add to that 3 times negative 8, or negative 24. Our final answer, negative 28. That's an ugly looking 8. Let me, there we go. That's a little better. All right. And the last thing they're asking us to do here is just find the magnitude of u, it looks like. Magnitude of u. So I'm going to just drop down a radical, and under the radical, I'm going to take the first thing in vector u, negative 1, and I would square that. Plus, we're going to take the second thing in vector u, and we're going to square that. Negative 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, add them up. Under the radical, we got a root of 10. All right, good times. All right, now I think, yeah, there should be a couple practice problems in your notes that will just mirror what we did here. And I think, yeah, this one will go first. So this will be just like our first example, just find some dot products. And then the second one here will be like the next example where you're applying some of those properties. So you know the drill, pause the video, try the problems, fire it back up, see if you got them right. All right, for letter A, we're dotting these two vectors. So 3 times 2, that's a 6. Add to that. 4 times negative 3 is a negative 12. Final answer, negative 6. Letter B. Uh, if we multiply the first two things, negative 3 times 1 plus negative 5 times negative 8, and that adds up to a positive 37. Letter C, first times first, negative 30, plus second times second, positive 30, and our final answer there is zero. Excellent. I hope you got them right. I hope you paused the video. Oops, move that over there. All right, so they give us u and v vectors up here, and they want us to do uh, a couple of operations for a, b, and c. Okay, now for this, let's do the dot product in here first. So that'll be u times u dot v. So that'll be a negative 6 plus 4 times 6 is 24. So that becomes a positive 18. And then that positive 18 gets multiplied by vector v, which is negative 2 comma 6. And if we distribute that negative 18, we should wind up with negative 36, comma 108. All right, letter B here. Let me get uh, blue ink. So let's see here, you know, we're going to dot U with this sum. So let's, I'm going to copy U down here, 3, comma 4, and then we're going to dot that with the sum of U and V. So if we add the 3 and the negative 2, that's a positive 1. And then the second component, the 4 and the 6, adds up to a 10. So there's our two vectors that we're now going to dot together. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 4 times 10 is 40. Answer, answer is 43. All right, one more to go. And there they're just asking for a magnitude. I'm going to kind of do it like this. Here's vector v, and we want the magnitude of v, or its length. So what we can do is just set down a radical, and then I'm going to bring this number down and square it. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Plus, we're going to bring down this number and square it, 36. And if we add those up, we wind up with the root of 40. 
Now you can leave it like that. It's a, it's a correct answer. But remember, we can look to simplify radicals. And another way to write 40 is 4 times 10. And then the square root of 4, that's a perfect square root. We can make that a 2 times the root of 10. And our good answer just got better. Okay, I think we got one more example for this video. The angle between any two vectors. Uh, the angle between two non-zero vectors is the angle theta. Theta will be between 0 and pi. Uh, between their res respective standard position vectors, as shown here in the figure, uh, this angle can be found with a dot product. So here's our picture. We've got the origin here. Vector v goes this way. u goes over here. The angle between them is theta. And theta is actually pretty simple to find. Let me make this a little bigger. So the cos of angle theta has a numerator and a denominator. The numerator is just the dot product. And then down below that, we've got the magnitudes multiplied together. So upstairs, u dot v. Downstairs, magnitude u times magnitude v. And that will be equal to cos theta. So of course, to get angle theta, we'll have to cos inverse each side. So let's check out our example from the book, example 3. Find angle theta between vectors u and v. And they were nice enough to provide us a little graph here. So u is over 4 up 3, v is over 3 up 5. And we can see the angle's not very large. It's definitely acute, uh, less than 90. And I'd even make a guess that's less than 45 degrees. So we can sort of do a, a reasonableness check of our answer. And because uh, this is kind of a new concept, I'm going to write this out. And I'll show you how I approached these in school. Here's cos of theta. So upstairs in the numerator, u dot v. And then down below it, magnitude u multiplied by magnitude v. Now, cos theta equals. Let me get this picture out of here so I have more room. I'm going to write my uh, u and v upstairs. And you'll see why in just a minute. So here's our vector u, and we're going to dot that with vector v, 3 comma 5, and then down here. Now I'm going to just put a couple of radicals down here, and you'll see why in a minute. Because what goes in those radicals, remember just to find these magnitudes, I'm going to bring down this first number 4 and square it, plus I'm going to bring down the next number 3 and square it. And then I'm going to hop over to vector v, bring down the 3, and square it, plus bring down the 5, and square it. All right, let's keep simplifying and working on this. Let's actually do our dot product in the numerator. So we've got 4 times 3, that's 12, plus 3 times 5 is 15. And then down in our denominator, this first radical is a good one because it just becomes the root of 25 and the root of 25 is 5. And then we've got this radical. When we add up the numbers underneath, we get a root 34, and we can't simplify that, so we'll leave it as 5 times root 34. And then one last little thing I guess we can do is uh, add up those numerators. So that's going to be 27 over 5 times root 34. And now remember, what we're looking for here is an angle. And I didn't recopy it, but over here I've got cos of theta equals. Well, we've done all that work. This is what cos of theta equals. So here we would just plug this into our calculator. Well, actually, let's write it out like this first. Let's cos inverse both sides. So theta is going to equal the cos inverse of whatever 27 divided by 5 roots of 34 is equal to. And we would just punch that in the calculator. Make sure you're in rad mode. 27 divided by 34 root times 5 equals cos inverse. And you should get, we'll round to one decimal spot. Theta is approximately 22.2 degrees. And again, if I bring back up our graph, that's a pretty reasonable answer. Because again, we estimated that's definitely less than uh, 90, even less than 45 maybe. So yeah, that's a pretty reasonable answer. All right.
Uh, now, in your notes, you might find this checkpoint question after example four. So look over to the next page. You might want to find this one after example four and find the angle between these two vectors like we just saw. All right, I got the, everything set up here. Got our two vectors in the numerator. Got some empty radicals downstairs. Let's get to work. So drop down the two and square it plus drop down the 1 and square it, drop down this 1 and square it, plus drop down the 3 and square it. All right, so let's even do that denominator right down here. So first we're going to have a root of 5 times a root of 10. And then our numerator, I'll switch to red ink, we'll do the dot product. Let me get this out of here, whoa, there we go. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 times 3 is 3, so our numerator is just going to be a 5. Now that denominator, we can do something with that. Since we have one square root times another square root, we can multiply them together, put them under the same radical. 5 times 10 is 50. Now there is a perfect square hidden in 50, and that would be 25 times 2. So I could write that as a root 25 times a root of 2. And the square root of that 25 will turn into a 5. And we've still got a root 2 down there. And we will have a cancellation now. So we can have those cancel. And remember, that root 2 is a denominator. It will stay a denominator. And when we cancel the 5s, there is a 1 placeholder left. Now you could go to your calculator. Because remember, this is equal to cos theta. So cos of theta is 1 over root 2. It would be very easy. Put that in the calculator and do the cos inverse. Or what happens if we rationalize 1 over the root of 2? We get cos of theta is equal to square roots of 2 over 2. Think back to the unit circle. Cos uh, inverse is defined in the top two quadrants. Positive cos will be in quad 1. Where do we see an x value of root 2 over 2? Well, that would be at 45 degrees theta equals, not approximately, this is exactly equal to 45 degrees. All right, I think that'll wrap everything up. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll do some uh, odd problems in class, and the homework will be on WebAssign. And I'll see you in the next video.